today's topic, I'm going to call it a little bit like crime and punishment. What does that mean? It means that sometimes even the best players in the world allow themselves to go a little crazy and play a really strange opening. And sometimes they play it against such a strong opponent that they get really punished for it. And this will be today's example. And the player who lost this game is none other than the US number one player and number four player in the world, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. That's a game from 10 years ago. He was still very high rated, about 26, 60 or something, yeah. And nonetheless, he's playing a Russian Grandmaster by the name of Andrei Volokitin. And he tried something very ambitious, very, how should I say, unusual in the opening. Something that all of you probably know is a no-no. And watch what happened. That game became really, really exciting. Then we will see a nice, uh, uh, actually it's more of a composition than a than, uh, combination. So, E4, C5, so far the game starts very normal. But now, Hikaru, who in 2005 was very experimental, he plays something very, very strange. Anybody want to guess the next move? Even a grandmaster at 2660 sometimes like to be a little foolish. <coughs> he did that. He went queen h5. He really did it in a real tournament game. And he did it more than once. Okay, so now the game really begins. Now we're going to think, okay, this is a really strange move. The queen is coming out too soon and a grandmaster is doing it. We have to respect it. The, qu the queen is attacking the pawn on c5. I don't know if this is like the end of the world because black can sure get a lot of time if white is going to start taking pawns and then come back with the queen when it's attacked. So to begin with, I don't know if this is such a crazy, it's just such a great idea. But in any event, he decides to play knight f6. And he says, okay, if you take my pawn, I'll take your center pawn on e4. So be my guest, do your worst. And Hikaru says, no, I'm not interested. I'm just going to put my queen where it's safe for the moment, defend my e pawn. And my queen is already kind of in an attacking position. So now maybe white wants to push his pawn to e5. That could be a bit annoying. So Volokitin plays very logically. You'll see that black played this game for the most part in a very logical but very aggressive way using both principles but also a lot of imagination. So, bishop e2, again, kind of a strange decision in my opinion because there are like a lot of moves here you can play. You can play your knight out, for example, you can play c3 at the right time. Okay, he decides to play bishop e2. It's almost like he's telling his opponent, I'm going to play all those funny moves you cannot predict and you can't do anything to me. But his opponent says, oh really? Let's see. So, e5. Normally when we make a move like this, we have to be very careful because we are weakening other squares. Right now, there's no pawn that will defend the square anymore for black. But as you can see, that square is so much in the control of the black pieces that he's going to go d5 next move. If white wants to play the move c4, he can do it, but then my knight is ready to hop to one of those squares, and I don't think that this is going to be a lot of fun for white. So, d3. Bishop e7, already the bishop is on a good square, tickling the queen on h4, like I'm always, every move is going to have to think, what if, what if, the knight is going to move, so Hikaru says, I, I don't want to do that, queen to g3, again, it looks like a very aggressive move, he's attacking the pawn on g7, so some of you might say, well, maybe it's time to castle, but Volokitin said, nope, I'm not going to castle just yet, because I realize that if you take my pawn on g7 and I'm going to go rook g8, first of all, I'm starting to chase your queen around and I can always get my own pawn on g2, which is also free for the taking. So why do I need to defend my pawn if I'm not really attacked? Okay, so he played, bam, d5. I have to say that so far, I'm a lot impressed with the way black has played this opening than white. White moved his queen to h5, then he moved it to h4, then he moved it to g3. That's three moves with a queen. In the meantime, Black developed both his knights, his bishop to e7, and he has as good a center as you can build. E, D, C5. No wonder that black is probably better in this position. So, white played knight to d2. <coughs> Again, defending the pawn on e4, uh, e4 that was attacked. And now black says, okay, now that your knight is blocking the bishop, in other words, <coughs> if before, let's say on castles, Maybe, maybe white could have played some tempo move like bishop here, gaining a tempo. Notice you cannot play knight h5. 
So you'd have to play knight e8, then maybe white can just develop his piece and the bishop can always go back if the king moves. So black was a bit smarter, I think, about that. First of all, he hit in the center with d5. When white defended and blocked his bishop, then he decided to castle. That's a good move order. And white played c3. Well, because maybe he doesn't really feel like seeing this knight jumping to d4 or b4. Okay, so far the game goes interesting. So now black said to himself, all right, I have control of the center. I have three of my four minor pieces developed. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with the bishop on c8. Am I going to just put it here? Is that the best square for it? And if not, where else am I going to put it? So maybe I just want to wait for it. And he said, okay, where do I have an advantage? I have an advantage in the center towards the queen side. So when you have an advantage towards the one side, then it's a good idea to start gaining the space there. So b5, very, very logical move. Gaining space, controlling most squares, and that pawn maybe at the right time feels like advancing to b4 and doing some tickling, right? Or maybe later on I will push my pawn to d4 like happened in the game. And I'm ready for a break in the center. Yes, Arjun? Is it like the four pawns attack on the side? Kind of, yes. <coughs> so, in this position, white is already in thinking mode because everything is a bit stuck. If you move this knight, then you're going to lose this pawn. I'm going to take it twice. As long as you don't move this knight, I can't move this bishop. And as long as I can't move this bishop, my rook in the corner is going to look funny. On the other hand, my king is stuck in the center. My rook is in the corner and my knight hasn't been developed. So my first inclination is, okay, let's develop the knight and attack the pawn. But he didn't do it. He went knight here. What would have happened if he would have played here? I want to see hands up if you know it. Why didn't you just develop like a normal person? Knight f3 towards the center. Looks like such a logical move. I'm definitely looking for more than one hand here. I want you to look at the position, use your imagination and think. This is such an obvious move. If he didn't play it, he must have had a really good reason not to play it. Yes. Knight two. That is quite right. Knight to h5. And uh, hmm, what's happening with his queen? Can we see a little bye-bye sign? Yeah, the queen is going bye-bye. Exactly, you're going to lose your queen. Where's the queen going to go? Not good. So now we understand why he had to play knight to the rim. Even though he's not so proud about that, he still played it. So I'm going to play now a move for black, and I'm expecting one of you to raise your hand and give me an opinion. Why did he play this move? What is the point of this move? Adi. Very good. He's inviting, of course, pawn takes, knight takes. And he puts a lot of pressure. At the right time, he might want to take on c3. And the d-pawn and c-pawn are going to be very, very weak. Very difficult position. He also wants to do something like pawn takes, pawn takes, then b4. And once that happens, the d4-pawn, the d4 square is completely in black's control. And guess what mischievous knight is going to jump right into it? This one. So white said, OK, I'm not happy again. Let me close things up a little bit. So how many of you think that we need now to really do something about our B-pawn? How many of you are, are in panic? We are about to lose our B-pawn. We have to do something about it. Anybody? Nobody. That's good news. Don't be in panic. The B-pawn is not important. Now everything is about the element of time, doing things before white gets organized, and trying to get the initiative. So there are several good moves here. I'm going to play another move for black. And again, I would like somebody to help me by interpreting it. This is a great move. The computer, by the way, gives it the best mark. He thinks it's the best move in the position. Maybe if I would have asked you there, I would have gotten a lot of answers. I don't know if I would have gotten many answers saying 98. But this is a fantastic move. This move has, has several good ideas. Who can explain them to me? At least three reasons, no less, three reasons why this is a decent move. Let's see if you can tell me, one by one. You don't have to tell me all, <coughs> all three. Arjun. You want to play knight d6, knight d7. Correct. Wait, wait, wait. One at a time. He wants to play knight d6. The knight on d6 is great. He's hitting the pawn on c4. He's also defending b5. That's a good idea. Sometimes the knight on d6 can be really supportive of the center, king side, queen side. That's one thing. What else? 
He wants to play bishop h4, activate his sleepy bishop on e7, and bug that queen that is already not very happy where it is. Very good point. And the third one, why you move the knight away from where it was? One more thing that you might achieve, Arjun? Um, not really. The knight you already agreed probably is going to land on d6 as a good square for it. Yes? F5. Yeah, you want to push the pawn to f5. At some point, you want to just open things up. And all of those things somehow happen in this game. Although you will notice that black was a bit careless at one moment, but nonetheless, it was an interesting game. So, he took on b5. I don't know if this would have been my first choice, but it's really hard to suggest anything here. What can you suggest? If this knight moves to d2 finally, then pawn takes pawn is very annoying, and black is going to have a protected pass pawn. This knight is not going anywhere. The queen is not really going anywhere. And I think he was maybe thinking, am I sure I want a castle here? Is it absolutely urgent? So he decided to take. And now, bam, attack on the queen tempo. Now, white played a very fast move here because he doesn't have that many squares for the queen. You have to go here. And now he played, bam, saving the knight and threatening a little visit to c2 with a beautiful fork. Well, what to do now? Bishop d1, that's right, he played bishop d1. Now, black played a move that I didn't like so much. It's hard to blame him. I think that maybe in a game many of us <laughs> would have played that move. He played f5. And I think this is not as good. I think this is not, it looks scary, but it's not really as scary. What do you think should have been played here instead? Let's hear if any of you have any ideas of what should I play. There's one move here that I especially like. Notice that white is threatening a3. I'm threatening to play the move a3, and then where is this knight on b4 going? Out of the board, right? So if I'm going to give the knight, it's got to be a good reason. Or maybe I have a move that I don't feel like giving the knight. But then I have to think of how I want to build my structure. Yes. Yes. Queen a5. Queen a5, it's interesting, but I mean, I'm guessing that the queen now is kind of committed to the other side, right? Maybe now I can play with white queen h5 and attack the bishop and the pawn on e5 at some point. So, and I can castle probably when your queen is on a5, then I'll gladly castle kingside. Yes? a6. a6. That is the move that I would have liked to see. a6, I think it's a great move. It's almost like in the Banco Gambit. I don't know some of you might play it. You just give a pawn to open all kinds of files and diagonals. And what do you do? If you play a3, I'm just going to go a takes b5. You cannot take my knight. My, rooks are, my rook is pinning your rook. If you take on a6, then my bishop from c8, bam, goes right into the game to a6. And the pawn here is already crying. Crying hard, right? So a6 would have been my favorite move. But Volokhitny decided that he's going to sacrifice a piece and going to make a real mess out of it. And well, he succeeded, but Hikaru had better chances at some point. He could have done better. So, f5, very, very strong. Attack on e4, but unfortunately, he played a3. And now, knight to d6. Force, the knight has nowhere to go from b4. So he took it, and he played pawn takes. Double attack on the queen with the pawn on e4 and the rook on f8. So he played queen h5. Good move. Very nice. Now again, black has to make a decision. Yes, he's down a piece, but it is obvious that he's attacking like a madman. And he's thinking, hmm, I'm attacking f2 with my bishop and my rook. But unfortunately, there's a knight on h3 that's defending that. What should I do? Yes? Bishop takes h3. And again, when you first look at the position, you think, wow, white is just losing. White is losing. He cannot take on h3. If I go pawn takes bishop on h3 and the rook takes on f2, this is going to be a very painful discovered check. You're going to just go bye-bye. But here white missed a very good move. In the game, he played the move g3. Maybe he could have done that, but I think that this is the kind of position where f2 is such heavy, on such heavy fire. g2 is under heavy fire. How do you defend both in one move? What do you need to do to save them? And also, your unhappy king. Your king in the center is not exactly a happy piece, right? So yes? Castle? castle. He should have castled here. And if he would have castled, I'm not exactly sure what would have happened. I think that this, it would have been tricky. 
it would have been very tricky for Black to prove that he is really as good as we thought he was. White has his own threats on e4. He wants to play b takes c5 and attack the knight. And he has bishop b3 check, developing kind of. So he should have done that. Instead, he played g3. In itself, not a terrible move, but probably not the best. And Volokitin played very aggressively. Queen f6. I'm sure all of you can see the little visitor on f2, threatening queen takes f2 check mate. Now Hikaru should have just played the move f3. If he would have played f3, and notice that f3 is defended many times by the knight, by the bishop, by the queen, then I think that the worst is over. After pawn takes, he's not, he's not that bad anymore. <coughs> After all, the bishop is under attack, and if this bishop moves, my queen is attacking that bishop. So black would have a lot of proving to do that he can really justify this, all those pieces that are hanging. And I'm not 100% sure at all that this would have been the case. If he would have really played f3 right now, I don't know, it would have been a different kind of game. He decided to play the move bishop to b3 check first, and that is not a good move, even though it looks like it's getting him an escape square for the king, and it's kind of developing the bishop. That bishop was needed on this diagonal. Now, Volokitin just played king h8, and now the king, once again, the white king, is an unhappy creature. So he did f3, which he had to, and takes. Now I have a very nasty threat. I want to play f2, and then I want to play f1. And I have a bishop and a queen and a rook all behind it, ready for munching. Very difficult. So I think Hikaru played the only move that makes sense before that pawn starts advancing. Let's block it right now. Else the f-file is going to open. And, but here Volokitin is already in good shape. He played bishop to g5. Among the threats, bishop e3 check. Very difficult. So knight takes f3. Again, when we first look at the position, we think to ourselves, oh my god, white really managed to somehow save his miserable position. <coughs> but no. Who could tell me what should we play here? I can tell you that the move that black played was great, but he had an even better move, but kind of with the same idea. Probably didn't really need to play the move that he played. Let's see if you guys can use your imagination and tell me what is the best move in the position. Take a moment. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, I'm assuming that after pawn takes e4, you want to play knight takes e4. And, well, that's a bit scary, I have to admit. But after e4, maybe I can play bishop takes g5 and hit your queen. Maybe, right? <coughs> Again, I'm not saying this is the end of the world, but I think that here... Black has, has a really good position because the knight on f3 is stuck, but we have a bishop here that's not really doing any well, any, any, anything, it's not doing well, and is also being attacked by the queen in some lines. And there is a great way to revive it. <coughs> but the question is how? I can't just play bishop here, and I don't want to play bishop here, so what am I just going to go all the way with the bishop? or? Think of a way to revive the bishop, but sometimes we revive a piece without touching it. You just use something else to help that piece. But here there's just a move that after which it's just over. Well, in the game he played g6. And that was pretty good, believe me. But I think that if he would have played queen f5, that would have been very, very hard to meet. Because now the bishop is incorporated into the game with bishop g4. And after that, death. Just very bad. The king can't move because always bishop g, bishop g2, and there's no rook f1. There's just no move in this position. This would have been an insta insta win. So, anyways, after this he played g6. Also not that bad because after bishop g5, still queen f5. And now, yeah, desperate position for white. I don't know what he can do. His queen is really in trouble. It can't move. So he tried to play queen here. 
thinking, hey, maybe he's going to be satisfied with the queen sacrifice, just take my queen. But of course, he just played here and resigned. Because after queen, king g1, queen f2 is mate. And if you go here, I take here. Does that look happy for white? No. I don't think so. So I think it's a fantastic game by black. Black had really a lot of fun in this game. White went a little crazy with his idea of queen h5 and paid for it. So hope you enjoyed it. Now. I'm going to show you one of my favorite compositions. And this is a real toughie, I think. Some of you may have seen it because it's kind of a famous position by a composer by the name of Kasparian. He was an Armenian composer back in Armenia. And I really, this is one of my favorites because when you look at the position, you notice that not only is black two exchanges up, <clears throat> but also the pawn on g5, I mean, everything is under attack. You think to yourself, yeah, the king on h5 looks a little funny maybe, but how bad can it be? Right? It looks like I'm, I can always give up material. Even if I give up a rook for two pawns, I'm still not going to lose as far as material goes, and I'm going to be okay. But this is still a white to move and win combination. And it looks crazy. It looks like how are you ever going to win it? I can, I'm always, I mean, even if I go like rook takes f4, I should be able to just break the whole structure and how am I going to lose? However, you will see that, yep, this is losing. This is really losing when white moves. So, because this is really, really tough, I'm going to show it to you. And let's enjoy it together. So, the solution. Knight e8. Okay, this is kind of an easy solution. I mean, easy first move because the threat is mate. I want to play knight g7, check. King g6. Bishop f5, checkmate, right? So not that many choices. You can play king g6, or you can play rook takes f4. Let's try to play rook takes f4. Again, sacking the rook. Now we will play knight g7, check. King here. Now, we need to kind of take all the escape square from the king. Look how beautiful chess is. Check. How many legal moves do you have? One. Then I play check. Looks like a crazy move. What is he doing? Giving his bishop? How many legal moves do you have? And then he goes g4, and it's going to be mate. Even though you're up two rooks against a knight, there is just no way you can stop either me taking this rook or this rook with mate with a pawn. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Any move you make. Move this rook, it's mate here. Move this rook, it's mate there. Beautiful. Really a beautiful combination. So. Okay, the alternative, everywhere it's, mate. it's mate everywhere, exactly. So he's going to try to run with his king. He's going to play king here first. Now what? Again, it looks like, wow, this is like beautiful. The king is just running away, and now it looks like there's no, no real mate. <coughs> but h5 check, again, a beautiful little sack. And again, you have a problem. If you take with the king... Then my knight is going to come here with check, giving you no time to do anything else. The king will have to go back here. And then we know that bishop f5 is made. So he has to take with the rook. And now we play, oops, sorry. Now we play f5 check, exactly right. And now, of course, the rook has to take it. Now I'm going to play g4, threatening bishop takes f5 checkmate. So you can't afford to move the rook on the h file at all. So let's pretend that you will move your rook away. And not only that, you're going to move it to a position where you're threatening checkmate on your own. Of your own. You're threatening now checkmate. But now white wins the same way we saw before, just a beautiful little win. Again, a little distraction, giving up the bishop. I know what I have to do, only one legal move, take it, and then knight g7, closing the mate net once again, and on any rook move, there's going to be pawn taking the other rook with mate. So if you move this guy, this is mate, if you move this guy, this is mate. What a brilliant composition where a knight and one pawn in the middle of the board are beating two rooks and three pawns, just because the poor king is stuck on a wrong square. Do you understand that? Well, now we are going to play some chess because you came for that. Mm -hmm.